our studios in the heart of Silicon Valley, Palo Alto, California. This is a CUBE Conversation. Well, welcome to the special CUBE Conversation here in our CUBE studios in Palo Alto, California. I'm John Furrier, the host of the CUBE. We're here at the special guest talking about our 10 years at VMworld. The CUBE is 10 years old. It's our 10th year of operation. We have the special guest, Sanjay Poonin, COO of VMware. Distinguished guest, CUBE alumni. He's on the leaderboard. You've been with us since 2010 or 11. I can't which date it was. Great to see you. Congratulations, John. Thank you. 10 years with us. And I think I was on your show before that at SAP. Yeah. So it's a pleasure to know you for these many years. We've been following your career, obviously, as CEO of VMware. So much is going on. If you look at the changes over the past 10 years, certainly the Cube has been documenting it, talking to the top tech athletes uh, like yourself. The cloud has changed the game. And you look at the, the time where the stock price that say VM, which has used numbers, you know, 44 in 2016, and then your original deal with Amazon set the real tone for what has turned out to be great value creation in terms of stockholder value. But just overall as a company, just really moving in the right direction. Cloud has changed the industry, but it's also changed VMware, certainly has changed the cube. Uh, so I want to get your take on that. But first I want to show you a clip and get your reaction to. Um, roll the clip. We've seen so many partners working with us to bring our solutions to customers together. One of these partners is VMware, and it's my great privilege to welcome Sanjay Poonen. Thomas and I grew up in the same town in Bangalore, and we went to rival schools. I spent eight years competing against him when I was at SAP and Oracle. I'm just happy to be on the stage partnering with you, finally. Thank you. Uh, so that's great. And, Thank, you. Uh, Thank you. He's going to do great things for Google Cloud. Quietly, many of you may not think of VMware and networking space, but the last five or six years since we acquired NYSERA, we've become the leader in software-defined networking. And our vision has been to take NSX, the product, from the data center to the cloud and to the branch. And so a lot of things that we are looking forward to collaborating with you, already done and more to come. Thank you so much, Sanjay. Thank you, Thomas. All Lovely the best. To have you. Congratulations. Sanjay, so that was a great moment from this year uh, on stage. I like the personal connection with Thomas Curry, and formerly of Oracle, now CEO at Google Cloud. Um, but that's just one of the many clouds you do business with. As I mentioned prior to the clip, October 2016, um, Pat Gelsinger, Andy Jassy, Raghu was there, Terry Wise with Amazon, you were there. That was a seminal moment that changed VMware. If you look back at the 10 years, it's been interesting. You got Paul Moritz laying out the vision in 2010. We call it the software mainframe, it was called the cloud, laid out the stack. That's all kind of happened. Now cloud is a tailwind for VMware. Software is the heart of it. That was Moritz's original idea. It's happened. Your thoughts? Yeah, John, uh, you know, I think back to, uh, it's very kind of when you reminisce about VMware. When I was actually prior to even SAP, I was at Veritas. And Veritas had a chance to buy VMware and lost out on that deal to EMC. I think this is one of the seminal acquisitions that Joe Tucci made, which may go down the best in history. But I remember talking to a general manager who ran the hardware business of X-Series at IBM, a lady named Susan Whitney, a wonderful lady at the time. I asked her, why did you partner with VMware? Um, and this was for the virtualization stack on top of X-Series. That's now part of Lenovo, but at that time IBM owned it. And she said this was the most phenomenal technology you'd ever seen that was going to change the landscape of server computing, now server virtualization. And steadily, one by one, IBM was one of the first. Dell, I think Michael actually may have invested in the company, but IBM X-Series, now Lenovo, Dell, HP, all embraced VMware one at a time. And my view is the cloud computing world is just the new hardware economy. So we had a, the first announcement made was Amazon. Why? Because they're number one. Andy, Pat, myself, Raghu, Matt Garman, some of the key people there, Mike Clavel, got together and said, we're going to make this our first and preferred, and it is. A very special relationship, it's our first engineered solution, and we are very, very excited about that. The, this next generation of industry, in the next 10 years, is really going to be about cloud 2.0. It's going to be about networking, it's going to be about security, it's going to be about software. And this is, again, an extension of kind of where you're at now. Uh, although Amazon is a deeper relationship, you have Cloud Foundation, which allows you to do business, as Gartner has recently put out in their famous Magic Quadrant. Of all the cloud players, except for Oracle, you are working with all of them. Do you have too many irons in the fire? Is that the strategy? But what we seek to do is to build a cloud foundation, compute storage, networking, and management, 
And that cloud foundation needs to first off sit on premise and make an on premise cloud look like Amazon. And that's the bulk of our market today where we're serving hundreds of thousands of customers with SDDC. We've been talking about that from the first time my good friend Raghu announced that on stage. So that's the core mission. Now, when people move that stack to the cloud, our vision is it's sort of like a mobile home. We want you to take your apps and move it on a freeway called VMware, okay? Yeah. And the first place we engineer that solution with a solution that's managed and sold by us is on Amazon. It's called VMware Cloud on AWS. It's basically the cloud foundation stack running there. But customers came to us, a customer like Walmart, who runs Azure and say, we're not running AWS. Can you provide us the ability for VCF to run on Azure? And we said three years ago, not now. But as time matured and we had the bandwidth to do more than one thing and one thing well, we're now doing that through our VCPP program and VirtuStream is enabling us to do that. Google is the same thing. They have customers like Colgate or Target, their customers, many of them in that same conference were up on stage. So this is all customer driven. We are customer obsessed. And when customers ask us a question, if we can't do it, we tell them we can't do it, which was the answer three years ago. But when customers uh, say, and we rarely, John, yeah. uh, almost never are making a decision for a customer on their public cloud. They've usually made that decision just like they made a decision on the hardware before we got there. They picked Amazon or Azure or Google. Um, and we want to be the indispensable choice, irrespective of whether you're running on premise as the freeway on or maybe off that cloud if you choose to. So I got to ask you a question. I mean, VMware has always been ecosystem friendly. You have a great community of tech people and customers. The art of partnering in this new era is a challenge because we just talked about Amazon's your primary on the engineering side with the partnership and you have other deals with multi-cloud and they'll, they'll get better based on customer attraction. I get that, but partnering is an art. What do you say to that when you say, hey, how do you partner in this new world? I think you have to have some certain fundamental philosophies. Um, a little bit of what we've described is that Switzerland philosophy where you have a big tent to as many friends and you have as few enemies. So listen, you know me, I was competitive, very competitive when I started my job six years ago against Citrix and Mobile Iron and Good. Probably a little bit competitive these days against Nutanix. But it's not personal, it's just strictly business in the words of the Godfather, right? Okay. But for the big guys, right, every one of them, whether it's Amazon, Microsoft, Google, even Cisco where there's a little bit of overlap, we want to be partners with them because customers want that. Yeah. And now these major titans in the tech industry, you know who they are. There's certain players in the hardware economy, Dell, HPE, Cisco, you know, on-premise. There's certain players in the cloud economy, Amazon, Azure, Google, and in China, Alibaba. There's got to be competition. I mean, you got Cisco out there, you got Red Hat, you got open source. You have a lot more new dynamics happening, not just infrastructure, win the market share. There's collaboration involved in a lot of these open source. You acquired Heptio as a company, certainly Kubernetes, as Pat Gelsinger says, the dial tone for the, for the next generation cloud. Uh, I, I truly believe that. There's also that open source angle. Totally right. Let's just take the one you mentioned, Red Hat. Okay? So Red Hat gets acquired by IBM. IBM is a great partner with us. I've been public in saying, services part of IBM, one of our key partners. IBM Cloud, like 2,000 odd customers. Even Red Hat, 80% of Red Hat is Linux. 15% of that, if I remember right, is OpenStack and JBoss, which is not doing so well. And maybe two or 3% is OpenShift. That's the part we compete with. And we'll compete hard there with the combination of the VMware and the Pivotal portfolio in containers. And you've seen these big ads we're doing, Containerware, which is a play on VMware. And we want to be just as strong in the container platform. But are we going to basically create a big rift between us and IBM because of that 2% of revenue? No. So we IBM can walk is one and, of the partners on the, on the cloud game. Yeah, absolutely. We can walk and chew gum, which means we will compete with that small part, but that's not the big picture. The bigger picture is we partner. Looking back 10 years, what were the seminal moments in the industry that you could point to and saying, these were key inflection points, could be a trend, could be an announcement, could be an acquisition? I think the advent of cloud computing, you got to give leaders like Andy Jassy and Mark Benioff tremendous amount of credit for doing something in IaaS that's been never done. And he did that on his own, it wasn't acquisitions. Mark Benioff for kind of creating something new, a juggernaut in the SaaS space, he did that on his own. But 2010, let's talk about VMworld's time. You know, that was private cloud, was just kind of hitting the scene. EMC had that messaging. Paul Moritz laid out his initial manifesto, the architecture that would become essentially the cloud architecture, DevOps as we know it today. From that moment of Paul Moritz to today, a lot's happened and a lot of stuff I will tell you happened. a few things that didn't happen. 
one of it, I'll just be reflective a little bit of a mistake we made, and we're glad it didn't happen. We try to be a public cloud ourselves, be cloud air. People you know, may not know much about that now, but we divested that business in 2015, and we embraced the players like Amazon and others. If we, if we continued that, it would have been a disaster. Fortunately, we do it. But do we look back and say we shouldn't have done that? Yes, but sometimes you learn from your mistakes. Docker hasn't happened. People thought Docker was going to kill VMware. What happened to Docker? Kubernetes came along and takes the head of Docker. So people have used Docker as a container. And all this talk in 2012, when I joined the company, 2012, 30s, oh, Docker's going to kill VMware. We've been able to embrace the container, but it's not Docker, it's Kubernetes. So these are things that you look at in the, in the scheme of time and you ask yourself, where is the industry trying to go? And when you see a wave happening, the key is to embrace that wave. We embrace the mobile wave. We've embraced with AirWatch. We've embraced the cloud wave with our partnerships with, AirWatch, with uh, Amazon and others. We're embracing the container wave now with what we're doing with Kubernetes. And the key is to get those waves right at the right time. It's just like surfing. Yeah. If you catch it at the right time, and if you're on a wrong wave, get off it quickly, which is kind of what we did with vCloud Air. You won't get everything right. I mean, look at, you know, Microsoft's not one of the greatest companies. They've made a lot of mistakes and, and they've corrected them. They tried to be a mobile phone and they were, that didn't work out, but Microsoft's the, the most valuable company today. And well, they had their learning. similar moment with the, with the cloud. Obviously, the cloud is a key a lever for value, Azure, value creation. Well. Yep. So when you look out now, the waves and the bets you're making, because these are ultimately bets. The wave you're betting on has to be, you got to be aware of it, you got to know it, you got to capitalize on it, and ultimately get the Yeah, I think done. there's What's two, the big bets there are two or three things that, you know, nothing, none of this is going to feel new, but sometimes you just have to, you know, one is we've really got to make this hybrid cloud and multi-cloud vision happen. We are very excited of VMware Cloud and AWS. I would love to have 10% of our vSphere customers pick it, okay? We have 100,000, 500,000 maybe, roughly customers in that space. 10% of that's a big number. We'd love to see them pick VMware Cloud and AWS, or if they're picking another cloud, VMware VCF landing in that cloud infrastructure. That's great. I think in networking, there'll be two companies that matter long-term, Cisco and VMware. Cisco will do hardware networking really well, and VMware will do software networking really well. And it won't be like one has to win for the other one to lose, or the other one to lose for the other one to win, it'll be two. Yeah. VMware, over the course of 21 years, spawned 50 million plus VMs. It won't take that long for an enterprise container platform to become a standard. Let's say 10, 20, 30 million containers. Why not containerware? I'm not changing the name of the company, <laughs> but VMware become that enterprise standard. So between us and Pivotal, we have to make that happen. We're very early on in this journey. As you look out over the next 10 years, with any big wave, we are on a wave, I'm calling it cloud 2.0 because it's, it's cloud 1.0 is about storage and compute. Now cloud 2.0 is about networking, security, and all these other new app experiences. In every new wave, there's always new brands that emerge. Out of nowhere, an entrepreneur starts a company. In your kind of experience, you kind of had to just you know, take your VMware hat, put your in, Sanjay, I'm an investor. I knew you do some personal investing as well. There's always new brands that pop up and these white spaces that turn out to be big, part of the big, big wave. I'll name two brands that everyone started to talk about this year because they've been two of the hottest IPOs, Zoom and Slack. Who would have thought in the world of Skype and WebEx that you could come up with a new video conferencing company that would be worth, what is it, 25, 30, 35 billion market cap? And it's founded by my good friend Eric who is an immigrant like myself from China. Really proud of him. And he, he's, a, you know, he's a paper billionaire, but that's not the way he acts. Similarly with Slack. What Butterfield, Stuart Butterfield's done there has become a, you know, and these are two brands that people weren't talking about 10 years, but have. How about on the AI side? Obviously AI, a lot of automation happening. RPA is a hot sector. I mean, there's a lot of companies who are focused on AI on itself, because, but it's becoming an inherent part of how companies are building it into an intrinsic part. You take security, for example. A significant part of what any company, whether VM or anybody else needs to do in security is make a data lake with AI so that you're able to detect these threats more and more and faster, faster. Yeah. That's an area where AI is inherently becoming, in all of what we see in the consumer world that's already been designed in, whether it's Amazon recommendation engine, yeah. Netflix recommendation engine, a lot of the Google advertising capabilities, the shopping experience, that's becoming part of the consumer world. I think it's going to increasingly become an inherent engine in almost enterprise capabilities. A lot of what Zoom's doing, Slack's doing, there's AI capabilities in all these products, and we at VMware have to do the same, make it intrinsically part of our platform. Sanjay, you forgot one brand, theCUBE. 
That is a great brand. I mean, brand. billion dollar valuation on the horizon for us. We got 10 Whatever more years. Whatever you want, man. You and Dave and Stu and the rest of the crew here, here, all of you folks in the production studio here have done, has been phenomenal. Because you know what? You get deep and you're authentic. And we love partnering with you. Uh, I wasn't uh, at VMware 10 years ago, but I was with you at SAP around that same time. I remember coming to your show, and my first impressions of John was this. That's what I tell people about you, John. You're authentic, yeah. you're down to earth, and you get deep into a story. We like yeah. that, and that's yeah. kind of been true to your character 10 years later, and we love that. Well, being authentic, informational, and entertaining, which you are, and certainly authoritative, and VMware has that community and that empathy has always been a great formula for us. We're going Innovation to continue. and customer empathy. That's the two engines that keep us going, John. We want to watch your best moments on theCUBE. We teed up a little special for you here, oh, that's nice Sanjay. Let's you. watch um, Sanjay's best moments on theCUBE. Quick highlight reel produced by our great producers here at SiliconANGLE Cube team. Our premise is, if there's more computing that's moving to the edge, more software defined happening to the edge, we should benefit from that. The hardware vendors will have to adapt, and that's good but software becomes quintessential. Four principles at VMware have not changed. We're really focused on software defining the data center. Why? Because it makes you more agile, removes cost, reduces complexity, makes the planet more green. We think we've got a long way to go in just building that private cloud, making the data center feel like a cloud. That's priority number one. Priority number two, extending to the hybrid cloud. You know, for us, it's a further, it's sort of like the chess pieces lining up of VMware's vision that we laid out many years for a hybrid cloud world where it's not all public cloud, it isn't all on-premise, it's a mixture. We coined that term hybrid cloud and we're beginning to see that realized. I think it's going to, the world is going to go from mobile cloud to cloud edge. And the whole world of cloud and edge computing is the future. And the more important thing is not necessarily how much money you make, but what a force you can be for changing people's lives. That lasts forever. If you look at what's transformed every aspect, whether it's the mobile device, which is really a computer in your pocket, or cloud computing, which is kind of bringing the supercomputer into the cloud. It's Resource. tremendous what we can do, and we have to constantly find ways by which artificial intelligence and these forces of, you know, the next uh, parts of general mobile uh, cloud computing can be used for greater good. Who was your favorite cricketer? Was it, was it Sachin Tendulkar? <laughs> <laughs> Clearly you're reading off your notes, Dave. <laughs> Sanjay, it's been great to have you as supporting theCUBE and being on theCUBE and sharing your insight and knowledge with the, uh, the industry, our audience, and your peer has been great. Final thoughts, 2019 VMworld's coming up. Uh, you're in the center of all the action. You're in the middle of it. You're working hard. You got a great relationship with Amazon. You got all the top clouds under your belt. You're on that wave. What are we expecting to see? What's the most important stories happening at VMworld this year? What should people expect? Well, first off, for every one of you who hasn't registered, be there, okay? You've still got a few days, a few weeks. You got to be there. We're back in San Francisco, the greatest city of all. You got to be there. So if you haven't registered to be there, we have, we just announced a couple of guest speakers there. Uh, last year we had Malala. Uh, this year the theme is Make Your Mark. Uh, and we're going to talk to two athletes who made their mark, not just in their professional life, Steve Young for the 49ers, one of the greatest football players of all time. Lindsey Vaughn, one of the greatest skiers, world champion, Olympic athlete. And then in the spirit of technology, we have some exciting news. Unfortunately, John, I can't tell you what it is. <laughs> otherwise people won't come, but I, I guarantee you, it's going to be really exciting. Maybe the best ever, okay? So be there or be square. Our 10 years on theCUBE, Sanjay, thanks for coming in. We'll be right back with more coverage on this VMware special celebrating 10 years of theCUBE at VMworld with Robin Matluck, CMO of VMware. Stay with us after this short break. This pendulum of centralization and decentralization has been swinging through the industry for 40 years. Pat Gelsinger. Hey, you know, if I need 500 millisecond round trip to the cloud and the robotic arm needs a decision in 200 milliseconds, ah. CEO of VMware. You know, I'm not going to send every surveillance picture of the cat to the cloud. 40 years of technology leadership. I want to just point out you're wearing a VMware tattoo for the- Yeah, we got the tattoo arms. machine. There we go. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Pat Gelsinger is CUBE alumni. We believe in a multi-cloud world. We think our customers are going to consume cloud services from a variety of cloud providers. And what we're all about is creating a common operating environment that lets you run, manage, connect, and secure clouds, uh, workloads on any cloud, right? Consumed by any device. And that means we've got to be present. The line between public and private, the line between on-premise and off-premise, it's fading, it's blurring. 
we're gonna get to a point where we're just gonna talk about what's the workload and what's the service I need to deliver the workload. In this industry, you have to be constantly innovating. And if you get too protective of the market that you're in, you start to get into a cocoon and then people are innovating around you and they're making you obsolete and you're not even seeing it happen. I think VMware has a vision and it's consistent. It really hasn't changed for many, many years. We were advocating hybrid cloud long, long ago. And so now what you're seeing is the delivery against that vision. Now the industry is starting to talk about tech as a force for good. So now we're starting to move out of the conversation of just the technologies and the products and the impact. But what are we collectively doing to make this world a better place? That's a new dialogue. Joining me here in our Palo Alto studios is Robin Matlock, CMO of VMware. Robin, thanks for coming in, celebrating our 10 years of VMworld here for VMworld Preview 2019. John, happy to be here. Always happy to see you, bud. So we're celebrating our 10th year of theCUBE at VMworld. It's been there since the beginning. You've been with us since the beginning. It's VMware's 16th VMworld, yep. our 10th. Uh, so much has changed. We just heard from Sanjay. We're going to have Carl Eschenbach come on, uh, your former mentor and boss. We have Jerry Chen coming in. Mm -hmm. We have Steve Herod, former CTO, both VCs. The VMware community and VMworld is really been such a steady player in the industry through the ups and downs over the past 10 years. It's been interesting. I guess the game's still the same in the sense that we're all trying to help our customers, you know, transform and be competitive and differentiate themselves in the world and that doesn't change. But man, how we do it and what the technologies are and what is the real story and value proposition, it's just a whole new world nowadays, right? It's been interesting to watch the ups and downs, the, the resiliency, that's a word that gets kicked around a lot when I talk to VMware execs, employees, former alum uh, from VMware. Great technology company, great engineering, great leadership, great community. The event's gotten bigger. There's more activations. The Cube's got two sets now. It's a big part of it. Well, you know, as the CMO of VMware, having you reflect on VMworld is something with resiliency. I love that. Thank you. I, I agree. And I think in this industry, innovation is at the heart of what keeps everybody going. And I think VMware has proven time and time again that we always are leaning into the edge of innovation. And VMworld is this massive platform where not just VMware, but the whole ecosystem can come together and really set the foundation of what's important as our industries shift and change in the future. And why does that matter to customers? And I think we've done a really masterful job, frankly, of keeping that technical innovation spirit in the purpose of VMworld. So you have some activations, you guys have a philosophy, and this is an email I just got from you guys. Work hard, play hard, inclusion in action, hands-on labs, lounges, and activation, and special offers from attendees. Um, what are we expecting this year at VMworld 2019? So first of all, I think there's some things you can always count on, right? You can count on the fact that it's a technical conference, that you're going to get technical education and access to the subject matter experts, the engineers who know products across the entire infrastructure and, and industry best in class. But it's more than that. I think you've brought up a few of the things. You know, we as an industry have a responsibility we have a responsibility to, to give back more than we take. And this notion of tech for good and what can we collectively do to help society improve. And you know, there's a lot of pressure on tech right now. And so we think that's a dimension that is, you know, evolving and continuing to strengthen in this uh, program. The diversity and inclusion is a whole nother layer. And, and we have so much work to do in that part of our industry. And VMworld is trying to create opportunity where one, we can create inclusive environments, where you know, different gender, ethnicity can come and really learn and engage on equal and you know, equal footing. And I think we're trying to get these other dimensions so it's not just a kind of a limited tech conference in the old definition of that. Looking back over the 10 years, one of the things I observe, and Dave Vellante and I talk about this with Stu Miniman all the time is, you know, VMworld started with the Paul Moritz's keynote that 2010, our first year, that was kind of like the Okay, this is the cloud platform. He basically presented what's happening now in cloud. Maybe the top of the stack didn't work out as well, <laughs> as fast, but it's kind of still happening now. But certainly the infrastructure and what became the core infrastructure as a service and platform as a service that enabled the SaaS market has been absolutely validated and that is creating massive amounts of value creation. You guys had a cloud, 
B Cloud Air didn't work out, but 2016, when you guys decided to partner with Amazon, that flipped a bit a little bit right there. You had a couple things going on. A little on. bit? You, I think you had yeah. the EMC owner now is Dell Technologies, you got the Amazon relationship. It just changed the trajectory of the company. Talk about that dynamic. Yeah, I think actually when I look back on my 10 years at VMware, that moment in our history is probably some of the time I am most proud of. I think what you see, you see when there's trouble and difficulties when you're either going to be at your best or your worst. And I think VMware really proved to be at our best in those challenging moments. We really came up with a winning cloud strategy. And the Amazon partnership is really just one of many, by the way. We have Microsoft, Google, IBM, you know, a whole 4,000 service providers. So there's a rich plethora of partnership in that cloud space. But I think what we really did is we transformed the nature of the conversation on hybrid. We transformed the definition of multi-cloud. And we have been acting on those strategies now for multiple years, delivering that value to customers. We have some fabulous case studies we'll showcase at VMworld. But I think that we really recognize that we had to shift our strategy, have to adapt, um, and, you, and we did. And we focus on what customers want and need. We listen to them and they told us, go embrace the big public cloud providers, which is what we did. And it's been great success for, you know, really all parties involved. One of my favorite moments at VMworld, um, and I, you know, I kind of ate a lot of crow for this, but I did, went to Pat Gale, so it was 2013, I think it was, I said, he was pumping up uh, hybrid cloud. I'm like, I said, Pat, is hybrid cloud a halfway house or a way station between just the final destination of public cloud? And he blew again, hybrid cloud, what are you kidding me? <laughs> and turns out he was right. Hybrid cloud became super important. You guys transformed that. But you were on that from the beginning. Yeah, I think we saw early on that one, customers want freedom of choice. And there were going to be many examples where it was more cost effective or efficient or just more pragmatic to run a workload in a public cloud environment. There are going to be situations where it was simply not feasible. It was better to run it in a data center. There were going to be applications that had requirements to cross the line on either or. So we always saw that that was going to be a need. Now we also envision that customers were going to probably not marry a single cloud provider, that they were going to end up doing business with multiple cloud providers, and that was going to get complex. Anytime there's complexity, there's opportunity to help customers simplify. And VMware really saw a place where we could help drive consistent, whether it was infrastructure, that's the, the ultimate, or just consistent operations. We can now allow you to manage these kind of complex environments with a seamless you know, operating model. And I think, yeah, we had early vision on that and it has proven to be very much the way the market has played out. I want to ask you a personal question because I really have gotten to know you since 2010. I really admire you as a person and as an executive, but there was a moment in time where you weren't always the CMO. Mm -hmm. um, Carl Eschenbach was your manager and you were named the interim CMO. And that's always hard. I always find the interim, whether it's interim manager for a sports team, no one wants to be considered interim anything. You fought through that. You kept kept your nose to the grindstone. You kept grinding, and then Carl and she promoted you to CMO. Well, I, it's actually a wonderful long story. We won't have time to go into it. One day I'll, I'll treat you to the whole background on that. But I think at the end of the day, I saw that as nothing but one thing, a golden opportunity. I mean, for me, it was, it wasn't a stick, it was a carrot. It was the greatest opportunity to go prove that I could be the chief marketing officer of VMware. I saw nothing but upside. I had very little to lose. And all I had to go do was just stay consistent with who I am, think about what's important to the business and, and really lead. And um, I really looked at it as nothing more than a gift from Carl and from VMware. I think they made it interim, frankly, just to create a soft landing. If it didn't work out, then it was a graceful way maybe to fit back into the marketing organization but I only had one option for me and that was going to be the real CMO. Got a great attitude, love that. What's some of your favorite highlight moments? Some oh my gosh, I think my favorite ones are the ones I can laugh about, which are kind of the, the bloopers that either almost happened or didn't happen, but they were so close to happening and we pulled it out at the end. The time we built the data center down at the base of the stairs, I don't know if you remember that, we built this entire live data center and we were using cutting edge hardware. And there were literally 
piece parts coming in hours before the doors were opening and the engineers were back there trying to get all together and it was, we never built a data center in a matter of days, you know, so that was kind of a funny one. Some of the keynote experiences and just, you know, you know, 3 a.m. in the morning trying to get the last slides put together and making sure those landed. Um, Malala was very special. Um, Pat's introduction, we did the, the Paul to Pat transition on the CEO transition, that's a highlight. One of the funny moments I think that you were involved with theCUBE was, I forget which VMware, maybe in 2015 or 2014, you were in Vegas, I think you just went to move to Vegas. In the hang space, it was the green theme or um, garden the village, theme, uh -huh. the village. Oh yeah, well, yeah the picnics. And, and, and yeah, the, the picnics, and yeah. the, the CUBE desk was, great creative idea would be green. And it looked like a massive green room. It looked like a, a, <laughs> For those a bunch of buds, uh, purple, <laughs> you know. You looked at it and said, that desk has got to go. And overnight they built a new desk. <laughs> I'm taking a picture with Tony Dunn. He's like, Tony's like, Pat's, this is never going to happen. Robert's going like, to get a new desk. It looked like marijuana buds. Oh um, my gosh, okay. <laughs> Robin, great, great memories. Um, looking forward to this year. What's some of the highlights this year? Just because quick, has the band's been announced? You guys got music again. What's some of the entertainment, fun activities? Well, you know, I think at the heart of VMworld is really about news and innovation. And so, of course, I can't do the spoiler alert and give you all that, but just trust me in that we will have big, exciting, industry changing news to announce. And you got to come and be a part of it and experience that. Um, I think having Steve Young and Lindsey Vaughn on stage, very different twist to you know, guest speakers. So they're going to be a lot of fun. They're champions, they're experts. Everybody loves to hear a journey of like, what, what did it really take to become best in class in something? So I think Sanjay will do a great job you know, having that conversation with them. We've got all kinds of great technical content. The party is fun. The band is going to be fantastic. Uh, one of my personal favorites, one of the public. So it's going to be really a great week. It'll be exhausting. I guarantee you'll come out of there tired, but pretty confident we're all going to have a great well, time. Well, you're a great CMO. You standardized the cube. You're the first one as a CMO to set two cube stages at an event and theater of presence adopted by AWS and a lot of the other industry leaders. So congratulations on that, on that standardization and innovation, keep innovating. Yeah, we all have to keep innovating. You too, right? That's part of our jobs. Robin Matlock, CMO of VMware here, talking about the VMworld Preview 2019 and 10 years of theCUBE at VMworld. I'm John Furrier. Be right back with another segment with myself, Dave Vellante and Stu Miniman, breaking down all the action from the guests, talking about VMworld Preview, as well as the 10 years of theCUBE at VMworld. People want to work for a mission-driven company. People want to buy we hope so. from mission-driven companies. That data is clear, and the leadership you guys are providing is you phenomenal. Know, the Cube is awesome. John Furrier, Dave Vellante, they're you know, both journalists, friends. There's something I've learned over the last few years about focus of a company. They've always got a very good perspective of mixing up thoughtful questions. VMware, I hope, is known by our customers yeah. as having these two engines. Engine of innovation, innovating product and a variety of other things and focused on customer obsession. If we do those, the plane will go a long way. Yeah. Right now, of course, there are a lot of folks from India in, in, in our world, but who was your favorite cricketer? Was it, was it Sachin Tendulkar? <laughs> <laughs> Clearly you're reading off their notes, Dave. <laughs> feels like always a little homecoming. Uh, I, I love it just because it's, it just feels like a fun party. <laughs> this is Sanjay Poonen, COO of VMware, and you're watching theCUBE. Okay, we're back. We're here for the Cube special presentation of VMworld 2019 preview as part of the Cube's 10 years at VMworld celebration. Of course, we're celebrating the 10th year of the Cube and covering events and extracting the signal from the noise. We're going to break down the preview of VMworld this year, 2019, with Dave Vellante and Stu Miniman. We're going to riff on what are the most important stories, what's going to happen, what do they expect to happen at VMworld. We heard from the VMware executives, Sanjay Poonen and the CMO, Robin Matlock, um, guys, what do you expect to see this year at VMworld 2019? Hey John, how you doing? Thank you. Uh, excited to be here with you. Looking forward to VMworld this year. You know, Stu and I, we've been riffing on this all week. I mean, Stu, big news, of course, is that uh, uh, VMware is going to fold Pivotal in. Pivotal, Pivotal stock up 77% on an a, a 800 Dow drop day. Uh, so. I'm sure there's going to be some buzz around that in the ecosystem. They're probably not going to make it a centerpiece, but 
We're certainly going to be talking about it. Yeah, I mean, Dave, you know, always, you know, acquisitions always are hot buzz. Uh, you know, I, I saw in the news there was some network monitoring. I can't even remember uh, the name of the company that VMware just acquired. So those things always hit the news. But, you know, you listen to the VMware people and they said, you know, biggest announcement we've ever had for vSphere, you know, all the cloud stuff. Of course, I think there's like 140 Kubernetes sessions. And the Kubernetes tie-in, of course, is where Pivotal fits in. We've heard Pivotal's going all in on Kubernetes and VMware VMware charging hard there. They want to make sure that they are not left behind in the multi-cloud, cloud-native world that uh, everybody's driving towards. And, and uh, so obviously cloud, multi-cloud, you're going to hear a lot about containers and Kubernetes, uh, you're going to hear a ton on NSX and vSAN. Um, and underneath all this, Stu, is going to be the Delification of VMware. They're not going to push that out forward, but it's going to be an undertone and you're certainly going to hear that from the ecosystem in the hallway talks. Um, it's, been, it's been happening since Pat joined VMware and certainly since Dell bought EMC, they've been much, much more aggressive about rationalizing the portfolio, picking the swim lanes, and really building platform hooks from the hardware into the VMware software platform. Yeah, like, you know, are we going to see any big execs on stage? You know, when Andy Jassy of AWS gets up on stage with, you know, Pat Gelsinger, there's a little bit of a ooh in the room. You know, Will Satya Nadella show up. We saw him at Dell World this year. We know Steve Young and Lindsey Vonn are there, so you've got some leaders that understand change and what's happening in the, in the environment from the sports world, but, you know, this is, you know, one of the, you know, big marquee tech events We've been covering it for 10 years. We've had lots of phenomenal guests over the years. So, uh, you know, VMware always throws some exciting things out. Well, what about Thomas Kurian? Yeah. That wouldn't surprise me if you see a bigger Google presence. I mean, you think about it, Stu. You know, Google, desperate to be, have cloud relevance. What's the best way for them to get cloud relevance? Is to, be, you know, buddy up with, with, with VMware. You know, they're both in the valley. Yeah, Google is, uh, you know, one of Pivotal's key partnerships. Uh, companies like Home Depot run Pivotal Cloud Foundry on Google Cloud Platform. Uh, and uh, yeah, Thomas Curian, it's no longer Diane Green. There's no longer uh, a little bit of, uh, you know, how do we treat our former CEO now over there. Uh, TK, uh, you know, was up on stage with Sanjay Poonin uh, at uh, the Google Cloud Show in San Francisco. So it, it's a short drive for Google to go participate. Uh, definitely wouldn't be out of the realm of possibilities. I, I don't I'm really don't expect it this week, but I don't think the moves on the chessboard are over. We're seeing, you know, Pivotal. I, I, frankly, I'd like to see and I said this in SiliconANGLE uh, yesterday, VMware is the software mothership. Put in Pivotal, put in RSA, put in SecureWorks, put in Dell Boomi, drive the software business. Um, that, to me, you know, starts to make some sense. And then, as I say, hooks from the hardware uh, and, and you know, pushing into the, into the software. So, I don't know, anything else you would expect this yeah, week? Just, you know, how much will that developer angle, uh, you know, be at the show? We've seen VMware try to get part of it. Last year, actually, the code group, which was right behind where we were at theCUBE, was buzzing and a lot of activity, not just, you know, hey, here's a hoodie and let's go do some hackathon. Uh, there was some real activity going on. And, you know, as we watch that changing of the workforce, I'm actually participating in two events at the show talking about uh, future of careers and what you should be focusing on and how do, you, how do you work on those? Uh, so it's a hot topic because we know, you know that the, the, the sands are shifting and therefore all the people that have their career working on VMware and love to dig in on this stuff are trying to figure out where they live in the future. Yeah, like I say, I don't think the big moves are over. Michael thinks big, go big or go home as he said. So John, that's what, that's what we're thinking. Um, can't wait to hear what you think. Thanks, Dave. Yeah, what I think is that uh, VMware's real move since the AWS relationship announcement in October of 2016, you've seen VMware stock price increase up and to the right to an all-time high from a very low point before then. That shows that the cloud and cloud success is going to be a big part of their customers. Can VMware keep the business momentum to keep their customers, grow their customer base, and attract new customers? So that's kind of the philosophy, which begs the next question. As the market evolves, we talked to a lot of CISOs and CIOs. We were just recently at AWS Cloud Security Conference. And really the decision makers are the ones who have the spend. They're the ones making the investments in Cloud 2.0. What are decision makers thinking around IT spend right now? What are they looking at? Can you guys share your analysis? Well, you know, John, here's the thing is that IT, 
people are always trying to place bets, right, Stu? I mean, where do we put the chips on the table? We got limited budget, even though we might have big budgets, but you got to pick your spots. And I think right now they're trying to figure out their cloud strategy. You know, some, some organizations are saying, we're going all in on cloud. Others are saying, well, you know, we're going to hedge our bets. Others are saying, hey, we still really need to keep a, an on-prem presence. What's our exit strategy? You know, what's the right cloud for the right, you know, horses for courses? So I think that's going to be top of mind for IT people. The other thing that's on top, top of mind for IT people is security. Um, I mean, more than ever, you know, we were just at, as John was saying, just at Reinforce, the big, you know, sec cloud security show. It's fundamental, if you're going to have a hybrid cloud, if you're going to have multi-cloud, you've got to have consistent security policies, governance, security, compliance, edicts across those clouds that really reflect the, the tenets of my organization. Yeah, uh, Dave, uh, absolutely. What VMware's done the last two years is they help give customers that bridge from where they are today uh, to where they need to be in that multi-cloud world as, as they build that out. So the VMware cloud on AWS, with the other public cloud providers on infrastructure, such as what they announced at Dell Technologies World this year, um, is something that's front of mind uh, for, for users today. Um, and they can take their, their VMware software stack and put it in other environments uh, going forward. Uh, you know, so cloud and security. Uh, Dave, you know, you can't talk about the key things they're thinking out without AI. It's a little bit earlier in that wave, uh, but started to see all the infrastructure players are lining up to how they have the best solutions uh, for AI, how AI is impacting everything that's happening in software. Uh, so, you know, that, that's the other key theme that uh, I would mention uh, in, in the pieces, and definitely we hear from decision makers trying to figure out where they go. And I think as it relates to VMware specifically, in infrastructure, generally, you're talking about automation. You're talking about, you know, predicting and solving bottlenecks and things of that nature, using machine intelligence to, to do that. Um, and, and I think that leads to a discussion that's on IT professionals' minds, which is skill sets. Uh, you certainly see, you know, Cisco uh, with DevNet and build, you know pushing infrastructure as code. CCIEs lining up to learn Python. Uh, if you're a, 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 a VM admin, you know what's your future? You want to reskill. You want to make sure you're contributing to that digital transformation of the organization. Moving up the stack, it's DevOps. Uh, it's, it's maybe supporting application development, it's agile. That's what's on the mind, John, of IT pros. Thanks guys, customer success is key to their revenue growth. I appreciate that, that's great insight. Um, final question, this is theCUBE's 10th year. Uh, we've seen a lot at VMworld since the beginning, 2010 for us. Paul Moritz was the CEO. A lot's happened in 10 years. Um, a lot's going to happen in the next 10 years. I mean, Pat Gelsinger talks about multiple generations of cycles coming in this one wave that's upon us with cloud and multi-cloud and hybrid cloud. All this is happening. What's your guys' take on what's happened in the past 10 years? And what's, what's the next 10 going to look like? So a really interesting question, John. I mean, I think that when we go back to 2010, uh, it was the three-par acquisition and the, the bidding war with Dell and, and, and HP now HPE, and, and Dell buying Compellent, it was the storage consolidation, uh, but the big move, several, Nicera, you know, VMware beating Cisco to that punch, and of course, you know, the, the big mega move, Stu, Dell acquiring v, uh, VMware and you know, through EMC, I mean, that has completely changed the landscape. What are some of the things that you look back on? Yeah, so, so you talked about some, some of the company moves there. We could talk about the waves of technology, the, the difference between 10 years ago and today and how we talk about cloud. Hybrid cloud was something we talked about, but really didn't have a good feel of what it actually meant. Uh, you know, we've been looking from a research standpoint to try to lay that out. Uh, you know, originally with like hyper-converged infrastructure and server SAN was how do I make my data centers look more like the, the pri private cloud? For years, Dave, I heard you say that the, the public cloud is the bar that we measure everything against. 
Uh, today, that, that's kind of you know table stakes out there. We understand how that is. Uh, now we're looking at things like the hybrid cloud taxonomies, and VMware went from uh, you know really you know fighting against the public clouds to now partnering heavily with the public clouds. Uh, you know we don't talk as much about servers anymore. Um, you know we talk more about serverless <laughs> than we talk about that environment. So those waves of technology as we go, and you know the landscapes change a lot. It's, it's always interesting, Dave. You got over twenty thousand people. The show, there's good new people always showing up. Uh, you know, some people leaving, and the moves on the chessboard. Uh, I'd love to look back at some of our leaderboards as to who we've had on the program, and you know, say, wow, you know, it's a, we, we just had Carl Eschenbach uh, in. You know, he used to be, uh, you know, one, one of the senior executives at VMware. Now he's a VC. The, the VMware Mafia has, uh, you know, t had a huge impact uh, on the overall IT world in Silicon Valley specifically. So, so many changes. It's been uh, amazing to be able to document that, and uh, you. Definitely going to have that for the next 10 years going forward, right? Yeah, so the SD, SDDC, the NICERA acquisition, the AirWatch acquisition, bringing in Sanjay Poonin, Pat replacing you know, Paul Moritz, those are some of the, the big highlights. You know, looking forward, everything's all kind of cozy between Amazon and, and VMware now. Look down the road, you know, why is it that early on VMware tried to get into the cloud business? Because they know what the trend is. This, so, so they have to hedge their bets, yes, we hear that AWS is the, the premier, the preferred partner, but we just did a deal with Google. I could see VMware and Google getting tighter. You've got the Microsoft relationship with, with, with personally with Michael Dell and Jeff Clark, obviously uh, Pat, all very you know, strong relationships with Microsoft. VMware, in my opinion, too, has to hedge its bets. It's, it has to have designs on that cloud market. Maybe for the next one, two, three cycles, they're okay, but they have to figure out, okay, how do we get a bigger piece of the cloud pie? And so I would expect continued partnerships, I mentioned Google, I mentioned Microsoft, you know, maybe even putting their toe somehow into that, that, that cloud mix again to kind of hedge what I think is the impending collision course with AWS. Yeah, Dave, absolutely right. Is you know how do they go from just being a partner uh, to staying strategic, so that it is not a stepping stone to take my VMware state move it a little bit into supporting with the public cloud and then realizing like, oh hey, the water's good here, maybe I should just migrate off because all of the public cloud providers have those services. So it's absolutely critical. How does VMware get closer to the application, closer to the business and more strategic there? And that's where some of the acquisitions they've made, if they do actually pull Pivotal inside, uh, they are getting everything together so that you know, Dell becomes underlying infrastructure, you know, the infrastructure leader that Michael Dell uh, wants to be, and they are the leader in many of the spaces that they play, and VMware, the, the software property to help them live uh, and, and thrive in this multi-cloud world. All right, good, thank you, Stu. Uh, John, what do you think? Uh, you know, we onto something here? We sure are, we're onto something big, Dave. It's called theCUBE, 10 years and 10 more years. Uh, this has been a great special presentation of theCUBE, 10 years at VMworld, and a VMworld preview here in theCUBE studios. I'm John Furrier, co-host of theCUBE with Dave Vellante, Stu Miniman, and thanks to our great guests at VMware and throughout the industry. And thank you for watching and being part of the Cube journey of the past 10 years. For Jeff Frick and the team here in theCUBE, thanks for watching.